Welcome to video number three for Control Shift Enter, Mastering Excel Array Formulas. Hey, I'm on the sheet Topics in the Workbook Array Formulas DVD Book Start. Hey, last video we saw an introduction to array formulas and we saw a math array operation. In this video, we want to look at a comparative array operation. So on this topic sheet, I'm going to click on this link three, and that jumps me to sheet number three. Now, our formula goal in this video is to calculate the smallest sample time for each city in the sample. So we have a small data set here, city and time. By the way, most of the videos where we're learning about array formulas, I'm going to have small data sets just because it's easier to dissect the formula. Later, we'll see some, some uh, real world large data sets and, and uh, look, time them and stuff like that. But here, when we're learning how to uh, create array formulas for the first time, these smaller data sets are much easier to deal with. Now here's our goal. I have criteria, Oakland, Seattle, Tacoma. And I need the min time. Now, think about this. We could do this with a pivot table. We could even use a database function dmin. And we'll actually look at those examples in a second. But let's think about an array formula. Now, you know, when I get to a calculation like this, I know that there's a sum if function, right? Sum if and sum ifs. There's count ifs, there's average ifs. But there's, there's no min if. Oh, man. No problem. You can actually combine the min with the if function and create an array formula to do just what we want. Calculate the minimum value given a criteria. Well, I'm going to start with the min. Now, the min is great. You could highlight all these values. But that wouldn't work, of course, because it would give you all the values. What I really want here is to somehow isolate. For Oakland, I just need a 9 and a 6. So I somehow from this column of numbers need to extract those two numbers and dump those into the min. No problem. Inside the min, we can put the if function. Now, logical test. That's a logical test that comes out either true or false. Now, most of the times we put single cells in here, right? This cell is equal to or greater than 500 or something. But watch this. We can do an array calculation right in the logical test argument. I'm going to say, is anything in the city column, are you equal to this criteria right here? Now, I should have locked this. So I'm going to come back over here and highlight that colon and hit the F4 key, because we are going to copy this down here. But notice, logical test, that's an array calculation. How do we know it's an array calculation? There's some operation. That's a comparative operation, right? not a math operation like last video, on an array of values. Now, last video, we saw the subtraction done on two arrays. But here, we're asking a cell, are you equal to anything in this range? Boom. It meets the definition of an array formula, some operation done on an array. Now, let's go ahead and highlight this. I'm going to click on the logical test, and I'm going to hit the F9 key. Boom. Whoa, that gives me a series of trues and false. Now I'm going to Control Z. Notice, this is an array operation. And when it gets evaluated, F9, it's going to create an array of trues and falses. This logical test, it can handle uh, more than one true and false. But we're going to have to use that special keystroke, Control Shift Enter. Now, a couple other technical things. That's an array, right? So one of the arrays in this formula is that range right there. F9, that's a second array that's being created by a formula element, a series of trues and falses. Now, the cool thing about these trues and falses is Control Z, logical test. I'm going to type a comma, and then the value of true I dump these values in. Now, that's an array, too. It's a, it's a range of values. I'm going to hit F4. Now, what will happen is anytime there's a true from the logical test, it'll then come over and get the values from there and dump them into the min. Now, mo most of the times with the if, you type a comma, and then you put the value of false. But guess what? If you leave that argument empty, it'll put the word false there, which is exactly what we want. Instead of having all these numbers here, it'll have falses whenever it's not Oakland. So I'm going to backspace. Very important we leave that out. 
Those falses will help us. Now I'm going to close parentheses. A third array that will be in this formula, if I highlight this, actually I could have done my little trick, boop, click right there. And now if I hit the F9 key to evaluate, we got our 9 and our 6, it, only the values given our criteria. There's our 9 and our 6. Now notice this is the third array that we see in this formula. It's filled with falses and numbers. The falses will be ignored by the min function. All right, so I'm going to come over here, close parentheses, and then I'm going to use my special keystroke, Control Shift, and Enter. There's the 6. I can double click and send it down, and boom, I get my answers. Now, I shouldn't have double clicked. I should have clicked in the cell and look up in the formula bar. Do I see my curly brackets? I do. I don't see a value error, and I'm looking up for the curly brackets just in case I'm getting an implicit intersection answer, right? But as soon as I see those curly brackets, I'm like, yes. Excel knew it was an array calculation and made the calculation. Now, I want to scroll down here and talk about why it's convenient that the if function function puts falses into that array. Now later in video number 14, we'll talk about Boolean logic. And we'll talk about what this means here. But occasionally over the years, I've seen people try to do a calculation for min where they multiply. Now this is not using the if function. The if function is the way you want to do this. Uh, formula here, but let's just look at this. If I hit F9, you see there's falses and trues, and if I hit F9 here, I can see it's got all the values. The problem with this method is that anytime you multiply false or do any math operation on a true or false, and we actually saw this a couple videos ago, you get 0 for false and 1 for true. So false, when you evaluate this, It'll not create an array with falses and the numbers we're interested in, but it'll F9 create zeros. And then the min function can't do its work, because it's supposed to be looking at 9 and 6, but now it's got some zeros in there. So that's just an example. You would never do a formula like this. Now, what does the if do, of course, when you highlight this? By using the if and leaving off that last argument, value if false. By doing that, when I hit F9, you see, beautiful. Those falses are will be ignored by min. Now I'm going to click Escape. And I'm going to click up on this hot link where it says min and open up help. If you go and read help, the third remark, if an argument is an array or a reference, only numbers in the array or reference are used. Empty cells, logical values, or text in the array or reference are ignored. So that's why it's very convenient that, the, it, that we left that third argument off. It put the falses in because the min is programmed in an array calculation like this to ignore the falses. All right, now let's talk about some other potential options here. Now we want to ask the question, could we use the dmin function? Well, yes, we could. Look at this, the dmin. Now the dmin, you highlight the database. That's the blue range up there, including the field names. You then tell it the field which you want to make a calculation upon. That's the field name. And then you highlight the field name and the criteria. The problem with dmin is if you, your goal is to copy your formula down a column, this criteria setup requirement prohibits that. So if you're doing a single calculation, meaning you only wanted Oakland, then that's pretty darn easy and it's fast calculating. There are some situations when, when the D functions will work, but it's only when you have a single criteria. If you have a column full of criteria and you're copying your formula down, the D functions don't work so well. Now how about a pivot table? Pivot table, incredibly easy. The one drawback with the pivot table, and we talked about this in video number one, is it doesn't update immediately. And sometimes people like their, uh, when they change the criteria in the cells, to have their calculations update instantly. So which is better? Well, of course, the answer depends, right? But if you need a single cell formula that you can copy down a column and that will automatically update when formula inputs change, then the min if array formula is a great option. Now let's go down and look at a different calculation. Let's go way down here. 
Um, so in this video, we saw comparative operator. The comparative operator we saw was equal. Throughout the videos, we'll see basically all of these, I think. Not greater than, greater than, or equal to, less than, less than, or equal to. Now let's look at another parallel situation. We have some sample times in city, and we want to do standard deviation. Well, like the min, there's no standard deviation if function, right? But we want to actually create a pivot table, use the stdev function, that's the database function, and then the standard deviation and if. Now, let's do a pivot table first. Pivot table is easy if you don't need the data to update. Now I'm going to highlight the table, field names and records. I'm going to go up to insert pivot table. I'm going to say on this existing sheet, location, how about I103, click OK. Now here actually is the most amazing thing about the pivot table. Let's say we had a data set that, wa that wasn't teeny like this, right? We only have two items, New York and San Francisco. What if we have hundreds of uh, cities, right? When I drag the city, down to the row labels, what does it do? It gives me a unique list. So that certainly is a great benefit to the pivot tables. Then we simply drag calculation down to values. I mean, and certainly clicking and dragging like that is faster than creating that array format. We do have to close this and come over here, and the default calculation is sum. So I come down to summarize values by more options, or I can come to value field settings, and then simply change to STDEV, the P means population. We don't have population, we have sample data, so you click OK. That's pretty amazing. So pivot tables really oftentimes are the way to go. Now what about D functions, database functions? Well, there's a STDEV, sorry, D for database and then uh, STDEV, the P is for population. We have sample data. Now it needs the whole database, field names and records, comma, the field name. That's the field name we're doing a calculation upon, sample times. If you don't want to have that cell reference, you can highlight it and F9 evaluate it. But it's got to know which field to do the calculation upon. And then the criteria. The problem with the D functions is you must have the field name and the criteria. Now this formula is kind of flooding out. The criteria is there, close parentheses, and control enter. So it calculates uh, without doing an array formula. But it does need that field name and the criteria below. And that's prohibitive in some cases when you're copying a formula down the cell. Now, uh, um, what if we had a situation where we wanted to create a formula and copy down? We wanted, in case the, the source data changed, to have our formulas update instantly. And a further complication, what if we actually had a naked data set without field names at the top? Now, that's basically never a good idea, but occasionally it would happen, and then uh, the D functions wouldn't know what to do. So in any one of those three cases, we could go ahead and use the standard deviation function. Now, in 2007 and earlier, there's the same functions that we saw in the pivot table and the D function, STDEV and P for population. In 2010 and later, they changed all the statistics functions with this dot extension, dot S for sample, dot P for population. It just makes them more uniform. You can clearly see that this one is for sample. And then we simply put our if. Now I'm going to use this data set, the naked one here. I'm going to say if anything in that range, F4 is equal to our criteria, then what do we want? We want some numbers here. F4, close parentheses on the if, close parentheses on the standard deviation, Control shift enter I'm looking up here. I see my curly brackets. Double click and send it down. All right, so standard deviation. Pivot tables, great quick to calculate, beautiful because it gives us a unique list. Maybe uh, it doesn't update like people want. Standard, uh, the database functions, great, but prohibitive when copying down the column or when you don't have field names. And then there's our array formula, sometimes the perfect solution. All right, so video, whoops, value error. It means go back, Control Shift Enter, luckily for value error. All right, uh, this video we did comparative operators. Next video, number four, we'll do a join operation array formula. All right, see you next video.